Hey garden friends, welcome on back to Flower Patch. After a stormy cold weekend, we're getting sun again, though it's still a bit chilly outside. So we are going to chit chat in here. I'm gonna talk with you about my salvia seeds that I sowed here in a video with you and a few other things. So come on along and we'll get busy in the greenhouse. So our question of the day is, have you grown any salvia from seed? And if you have, how did it work out for you? And then also what variety was it? Last year I did Blue Victory and this year I have the Victoria Queen. Um, I think that's the name of it again. Anyways, so I'm gonna see how the Victoria Queen does. The Blue Victory got really tall and beautiful last year. And it looks like it's coming back this year. So that one's been a big win for me. Okay, let me know in the comments below if you have and what variety. Okay, first of all, I'm showing you my new prize, prizes. Uh, we had to go take my husband, I had to take my husband over, it's an hour drive over by where Lowe's is, the town, um, and pick up his truck at the mechanics. And so he needed supplies. So of course we went by Lowe's. Now, in the past, I have said that I have been disappointed in Lowe's choices of plants, etc., and I must have been hitting it at a bad time or the wrong time because last week I was there, that's when we took the truck over, um, and I got a whole bunch of new petunias off the sale rack. So they were like $7 or less per six pack, so that's like a dollar a plant. Uh, a little bit more and then I also got some more lavenders because they were two for twelve dollars two good sized containers and I made sure there was two in each pot so that means I got three dollars a plant so I'm getting good at math doing this but then today these beautiful zonal geraniums I don't know if you saw my zonal geranium and seed grown geranium video comparing the difference and I said I wanted to get some more zonals at the nursery to compare. And um, these beautiful specimens were on the sale rack for half off and there's three plants in each pot. So I got two of them and I will pot these up into larger containers with other plants so it'll make a beautiful display as well as I will be taking some cuttings, which will help make them even bushier, and root them so I can have others uh, spaced out through the garden. Now geraniums, though some people think they're so common and et cetera, they are stalwarts in the garden. And if you can propagate your own, like I get from these, um, then it's just a win. As far as in your garden, not having to spend a whole lot of money. And we'll, I'm gonna do a whole video on the tack that I try to take in my gardening life or what I'm I'm trying to portray to you. Because, you know, anybody can go buy, any fool could spend money and have a beautiful garden. But you know what, it takes a lot of knowledge, it takes a lot of tenacity, it takes a real passion for growing from seed, from cuttings, from whatever, to grow a beautiful garden and not have to spend that much money. It's not hard, but you do need patience. I know a lot of people, um, they're, it's, it's, they want it now. Instant gratification. And that's okay for them. If they've got the money to spend on things like that, great. But if you are, like, the majority of people have to live on a tight budget. And they may despair that they, they can't have a beautiful garden because they can't afford all these big, beautiful, pricey plants. And that's just not the case. Me finding these bargains is one thing that you, you can think about or try to. If you live in an area that you're close to a Lowe's or a Home Depot or a nursery, watch for sales, sign up for their sales flyers. Um, and then you can grab these bargains. The bargain rack, they don't advertise, but go to the back of the garden center of your local Lowe's and see what's on their bargain rack. And every time you're in there, go and check because you never know what you will find, what kind of beauties. And these I will be able to overwinter inside if I decide to. 
mine that I overwintered in the basement didn't do as well as I had hoped. So that's kind of a hit and miss, just so you know. Okay, so there's that on how to get bargain plants if you want to get started. And I have already had a video, and I'll do it again when I do these, of how to take cuttings. Um, because I know people don't always go back and watch the older videos. I'm going to move these out of the way here so I can get started with the salvias. I promised we'd talk about the salvias. And in an upcoming video, just so you know, I am going to share with you how you can take cuttings of lemon coral sedum and root divide it to get more. I can divide this into four nice good sized plants. And um, this one overwintered for me in this pot. It's busted. It needs to go. Um, but I wanted to share with you how you can get more from one plant if you invest in one of these plants and you want more than just one because I think the only ones I've been able to find now now this is an off patent plant it is no longer under patent and I think Proven Winter still carries it themselves but um, it as I said it's not under patent so you can legally propagate it and we will do that in another video. Now I would do that because I want to put it in containers with other plants. Like if I want to do the, I don't do the thriller, spiller, um, whatever filler, because to me, sometimes that's just too busy if you have all these different flowering plants. Now with greens, um, that's a different story. So we'll talk about that in, in another video. So the sedums, I'm just gonna scoot that back. This is the sedum that I started inside. And the um, fungus gnat traps are full. These both weren't in here. This one got caught in my hair when I was pulling this off the shelf and I had to dig it out and just stuck it in here to go. But you see, look at how, can you see how big that one is? So these ones are a good size. Now these um, should have been bigger. Um, they've been inside long enough, but because of the fungal gnat, problem I've had. The larvae are in the soil or were and they were causing trouble. So these ones that made it, they fought for it. Anyway, so here is the one that I sowed, winter sowed outside. See that? See how much smaller they are? But it's amazing how many of them came up and I'm thrilled with it. So would I um, go ahead and sow indoors again? Not knowing now that I know, let me say that correctly, how well they do winter sowing, that's the route I go, I'll go is rather than going um, indoors. And that these, these ones do not have that big of a head start over the ones I winter sowed. So that tells me it's not worth it to do an inside unless I'm getting really a late start and I, I didn't. So good to know if I want to start more salvia. Now, one thing too about these salvias, and I showed you before, I showed a video on how to take cuttings. I do have to correct myself on that video um, where I took the cut. Now the cuttings do work, but I learned that a faster way is to take tip cuttings of salvias. And that's, you know, the tip I was cutting off and throwing away. Um, that part roots faster and better than doing the cuttings. Now this is one of the first, because this isn't the one I did on screen. But this is a cutting that has taken root and you can see there is new growth right there. It does, it looks really sad. And that's why I brought it in here. I think it got too dried out one day. And um, so yeah, so you look down here, you can see new growth coming up from here. So that one is good. I'm gonna put it in another container by itself and let it keep going. I'll keep it out here. And then this one feels like it's got a lot of new growth. I'm going to dump it out so I don't pull it. So this one has a lot. This one has roots, etc. Now I did some, the last tray I did, and I did it with you on screen. Um, the ones that I took the tip cuttings that I stuck in there, they already rooted. They rooted so fast. Whereas the ones like this took longer. So that's a note. Uh, the tip cuttings root faster and easier than the cutting cuttings, the stem cuttings. So that's just a correction I, I meant to make with you folks so that you knew that. And I'm always learning and I, I share what I know, but I am always researching, learning, and I will be sure and pass that along as I learn it. I'm just trying to get some, scoop this up. 
So I'm repotting that one. I'll cut off all the dead, etc. And I'm going to grab another little pot for this one. So I will go ahead and I will pot these ones up. These ones don't really have their second set of leaves yet. So I'm going to let them stay in the container that they are in. Let me point you down a little bit. I have a feeling you're not being able to see. Are we good here? We're good here. Okay. So I'm going to get my little pots, pot these ones up that grew inside. And since um, these ones are doing so well outdoors, despite the temperatures, um, we still have been getting down into the freezing at night or in 30s. Um, but this week we're only supposed to get down into the 40s. So these ones, even though they are kind of on the tender side because they've been inside and in the modest temperatures, the mild temperatures, I think they'll do fine, especially as knowing how these have done. Okay, so here's these two. I'll put them over here on the shelf. And these are just two of these. Now the other ones I took, I did uh, like six or eight. Those are still growing and uh, the tip cuttings have already rooted. So I'll have plenty of those salvias too. Alrighty now, so here's the seedlings in here. And I'm gonna go for first this one, these two over here that are the largest going. That's more seed starting mix. I'm just, I'm, I have a bag of potting soil underneath my bench here. That's what I'm grabbing. I should finish off that seed starting mix. Now I had picked up the seed starting mix. I don't remember where it was. Anyways, I noticed that it gets the, the green algae on top really easy. Um, and I wasn't impressed. That might be the peat moss. So it's normally why one of the reasons I don't use seed starting mix um, when I'm starting seeds, I just use the potting soil. Now I'm gonna say something here and it, it differs what some other gardening gurus say. And that is, they screen the potting soil um, before they start seeds in it. Now I'll say why I don't do that. They say they do it because they want nothing in the way for the little roots to get down and do their thing. And if they have to go around big chunks or whatever, it makes it harder for them. Well, I don't bother. First of all, the seed starting mix or the potting soil I get is EB Stone, the Edna's Best. I rarely find big chunks in it. Um, but there are some things, let me see, like this, I don't know, I, guess I can't see it. Anyways, um, for me, seeds, when they get started, they need to tough it out. And that means they're going to be a tougher plant. And that's why I like the, the winter sowing, is those plants are tougher, more resilient, better able to cope when you're ready to put them out in the garden than the ones you grow indoors. If you pamper them too much, your seedlings are going to be wimps. That's the bottom line. But if they've had to work for it, then they're stronger. If they don't make it to the point where you can plant them out, that means they were not going to be a very strong seedling anyways. So pampering them, giving them all these cushy, this cushy life before you know they go out in the garden, you're not doing yourself any favors. Basically, they need the exercise to beef up so that they can withstand the outdoor conditions. Because you know what? Life is not easy out in the garden. They're going to have to be fighting off bugs. They're going to have to um, fight off you know, bad weather because it comes and goes, fluctuating temperatures. And pampered seeds are just not suited for that. That's why you have the hardening off period after you've, you know, before you put them out in the garden. And that's supposed to help them toughen up. But why not just start with tough seedlings to begin with? Now, I could be all wrong, but you know what? I've had plenty of success that way. And I, let me see, and I had some seedlings that totally um, biffed on me. I'm trying to find one because I just tossed out some of the gumfrina that didn't make it. Now, this is one that I gave it a chance. It didn't look too strong, but I went ahead and potted it up and gave it a chance to keep going if it would. Now, here's some of the others that were 
sewn at the same time and you see how much bigger they are and stronger. That is what I want. Now this one, if it makes it, it's gonna be because it toughed it out and it's, you know, it's gonna thrive for me. But if it doesn't, that just means it wasn't, you know, it wasn't suited for it. And I have, I'll have a less hard time or I, I won't have to put as much time and effort into hardening off. In fact, I'm pretty lazy. I did a video last spring on how I harden off because people have you taking them in and going out and taking them in and going out. Sorry, I ain't got time for that. So um, I shared how, what I do, I cheat. And what makes it, makes it. And you know what? 90% of my plants make it, if not 95%. Okay, I'm looking for other ones in here that have their second set of leaves. Now some of these are really tiny and I may wait to pot some of them up um, because they still are so small. And by the time I've done these four, you'll, you'll have the idea. Now many of you are veterans gardeners and this is nothing new to you, but I know I keep getting um, little messages from folks who this is the first time around and they're worried about making mistakes and so if you can see me do it and see that it doesn't have to be um, super uh, finicky then maybe it'll, you'll do it and let me this camera keeps sliding on me put you over here okay here's the container and all I'm doing is digging I love this little trowel I have a link to it in the description box because I use this all the time especially with seedlings and I'm digging up the little plant. And even though it's a little plant, look at those roots hanging down. Look at those things. Can you see that, these roots? So I'm just gonna set it into the soil in this pot. These are the pots that I got from Bootstrap Farmer. Um, I love them. I love the size. I love the way my plants have seemed to thrive in them. And I tried them because, let me see, who was it? What's her? Uh, and Margaritas. She had them and she raved on them. And so, so I thought, okay, I'll give them a try. Now I had a bunch of those little round ones like I showed you, like these. These ones, but see, they don't have the depth that these ones have. Now, these ones have worked better for me. So when I had tried them out, I was so thrilled that I have gone ahead and bought some more for this year. And what I like about them is in the tray, they fit together really nice so you can have a lot in one tray. Um, and it's very, they're very sturdy. And I have been questioned on the fact that they are clear, which I like that feature. Um, because, you know, a lot of times you'll get that green algae and stuff. And I only do get that if I have them in it for months and rather than just weeks. I haven't had any issue with um, getting that with just having the plants in it for a few weeks like these. Um, these will go out in the garden around the first week of June because that's when after our last frost date and um, the soil should be warming up. Last year we had a cold June, so it didn't work that way, but that was rare. We usually do at least warm up in June. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do with those. The winter sown ones, I had them out in the garden. I, now that I've taken the lid off, I will most likely put them in the bespoke greenhouse over there where I want my excess plants. Um, these I will leave in here, in this greenhouse, so I can keep an eye on them. Um, the nights aren't supposed to be that cold this week, so these will get, I'll finish potting up when I get time. And that's it. That's it for those. I, I want to take you into my bespoke greenhouse because I've got plants in there. But when I knew we were going to get snow and cold and rain this past weekend, I had seen that my hyacinths had come up in two planters that I planted them in and I wanted them. In. <clears throat> and I knew they'd get smashed and or frozen and I wouldn't get to enjoy them. So I put them in the bespoke greenhouse. And when you walk in there, the perfume is so heavenly. I wish you could smell it. The hyacinths are doing beautifully. So I'm thrilled that I get to enjoy them. So I have to go in there to enjoy them, but that's okay. I've been in and out of there taking plants in. Um, there's a few other things I need to get set up in there so I can keep moving plants in there. Um, I wanna move all of the, I've got this, a whole big tray here of gumfrina. Let me take this down because I'm done videoing. 
Um, and I want to put those out there and make room so I can work in here with you guys. I want to um, do the cuttings of the, the geraniums. I want to do uh, plant up some containers with the petunias, the wave petunias, so that I can get those going. Um, I'll take you in there in a minute and I will show you. I had a self-watering window box that I had got at Walmart and I've had them for years and I mean 10 plus years if not more probably 15 years a couple of them got a little busted um, I still use them but I had just put potting soil in it and I threw down some two dollar seeds of alyssum and I left it out in the rain and then I just had put it in the bespoke greenhouse Saturday and I've got seedlings already coming up I mean this was a less than a week so I'm really excited about that because I love alyssum in my around my pathways in my containers with my other plants um, everything they're just a great this is a white accent plant but I will share with you how I did that and I'll do one, another one of those. So, okay, we've got the geraniums coming up. I also have my spring containers. I wanna use these. This is um, not grass, this is sedge. And this is such a pretty sedge. Anyways, it's hardy in my zone, therefore it will live through. Um, yeah, got lots and lots of things coming up for you. I will have, I, need, I said before I was gonna have a Q&A and I sat down and started writing down the questions that I could answer. Um, yeah, so much going on, and I, I can't make videos fast enough to share with you everything. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So I'm telling you what's coming up. Go back. I just had posted. I did a walking tour of the flowers at the Ironstone Vineyard. Um, they always do the biggest, most beautiful wine barrels, half wine barrels full of tulips and daffodils and other plants. And uh, their grounds are beautiful. I put it to music because there was a lot of background noise. There's people showing up. There was mowers going, all kinds of things. And I just thought it would be a relaxing thing to sit, have a cup of coffee, drink some tea, whatever it is, and enjoy the flowers. So I'll put the link up um, here somewhere. And you can go and watch that if you haven't already. And just know that... I've got lots more coming up, so be sure and keep coming back. Oh, I do want to do uh, share with you a video on my 10 best tips for growing zinnias. I often call them zinnias, but I know they're pronounced zinnias, but that's okay. You know what I'm talking about, and that's the most important part. So if I switch back and forth between the two names of them, you know, don't fault me for it. Alrighty, I think that's it. I will find out once I start to edit this if that thing is too annoyingly loud. Um, I will put it outside soon after I know it's been cleaned out because it, it grows this algae in it um, from being outside all the time. And when I put bleach in the water, it cleans it all up. I'll flush it with clean water and then I can put it out. I couldn't put it outside right away because the hummingbirds, we have them, they're back. I mean, they never leave here, they overwinter here. Um, and they would wanna get in it and I didn't want them to be harmed by the bleach water. So I'll pour out the bleach water, I will run fresh water through it, flush it, and then I'll put it back outside. But for the time being, I kinda like it going in here while I'm working. It's really kinda nice, nice background sound. Alrighty, friends, that is that this time around. And I will see you in my next video where we will be doing something interesting and fun. I'm so way far behind. It's either you wait, 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 because you can't start anything too early. And then all of a sudden, wham, it is time to go. And you've got to hit the ground running. And that's the time now. So we will keep on going. And I will um, also, I'll take you on a little tour in the garden. And we'll talk about what I'm thinking about for different areas. And especially the secret cottage garden. And... We'll talk about that too. Okay, see ya, bye.